Hi, my name is Jeff Jones and I'm with Top Gallant Partners and today what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the difference between uh, a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment. The reason that I'm doing this is that uh, we feel that there's uh, quite a bit of confusion out there today on the difference between uh, a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment and we're also going to talk a little bit about motivation and uh, types of uh, attacks that a hacker might use to uh, gain access or uh, cause problems uh, with your um, internal and external network. So let's just go, go ahead and start the presentation. So this is a presentation that I have done before and I thought we just shared it. It is on our website uh, but it's, um, it's a little bit hidden. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just go through this and explain uh, what we're talking about. So first of all, what about us? Uh, we're Top Gallant Partners. We're a, a network security consulting firm. Uh, we were founded in 2004. Our principal focus is in New England, and although we do travel uh, on occasion, uh, the main focus on our business is in the New England area. Uh, we service multiple industries. Uh, our single focus though is security. We are a consulting firm. Uh, we have a solid client base. Uh, we have uh, large large customers, medium-sized customers. We are uh, accredited and we feel that we uh, fill a need in the marketplace today that uh, cannot be addressed simply by hardware. So let's talk about hacking uh, what, what hacking is is a general term you know you, you go at something until you either fix it or break it uh, you know you can think about you know golf hacking at golf um, or hacking uh, to put something together you know it's sort of like you just go after it and the thing to really remember is is that that hacking is not a single event it's a series of events so uh, a, uh, a hack really goes on for a long period of time and that's why you know earlier the better that you do testing on your network to prevent these types of things from happening you are going to eliminate um, really most most of your problems um, at that time but you have to be uh, vigilant as well and you have to you know maintain your guard so let's talk about the purpose of hackers. The first one is uh, vandalism. Straight up, I'm going to uh, deface your property. So really, that's something you do for, you know, a hacker might do for fun. Um, just and you might just might be uh, some sort of uh, innocent victim. Uh, hacktivism is when someone tries to hack your network because they don't like something about your company or organization. And, uh, you know, we all know about this. We see uh, acts of terrorism. Uh, we see uh, different organizations that may be controversial getting hacked. Or it may be that you're just simply in an industry that uh, somebody feels that, um, you know, they don't believe what you're doing or, or, or whatever. So motivation for that is sort of like I'm doing good for... The rest of the uh, society by bringing this terrible organization down. The third one is revenge, which is always uh, is always is always big, and that's really disgruntled employee, uh, maybe a disgruntled customer, uh, who knows, someone that has something uh, bent especially for you that they want to uh, uh, go ahead and teach you a lesson through through hacking fourth information information about your company uh, information about proprietary information you know you can see this with maybe no other uh, nations hacking into uh, companies here to steal you know patents or processes uh, a variety of things and the fifth one which I think most people think is the reason for hacking is money 
and it is definitely a, a huge huge reason and um, but it's not the it's not the only reason so these five things really is uh, what a hacker thinks uh, could be its perp or his or her purpose so here are uh, five five types of attacks six I'm sorry six types of attacks that uh, that we see uh, one is denial of service you might see the words DDoS and that's a distributed denial of service attack meaning it's coming from different places but a denial of service attack is basically not letting you get on the internet or process your data um, and bring your business down and more and more people are relying on the internet today I know companies you know cannot stand not to have internet uh, especially with you know cloud technologies uh, the second one is what we call um, client initiate initiated and and that really is uh, when somebody sends you an email um, and you click on a website or a file and they create a connection into your device so um, the third one is remote exploits meaning that you can gain access to a network through the internet itself and not having to have an insider inside client click on something create it there's something wrong with the firewall there's something wrong with the server uh, it's been engineered poorly the uh, the fourth is social engineering social engineering is you know the old con man trying to get into uh, into your business and there's a variety of ways to do that I'll talk about that a little bit later uh, that's something that we also provide you know we'll go and call people up and ask them for their password or we'll we'll uh, we'll send them an email and see if they they click on it um, we'll you know follow somebody in uh, we'll do we'll do all kinds of stuff to help identify issues uh, inside your business and uh, the last two and I and I I put these down they're not really um, electronic type of uh, attacks but it really does fall in the category of, of of hacking and that's simple theft someone leaves their a notebook computer with uh, all the kinds of information on it and it gets stolen or somebody leaves their computer um, on the subway or a bus or in a rental car and simply lose it and that's kind of an attack but it's it's really um, a larger problem than that and we look at that as more of a um, organizational issue you know why was that data uh, on that device in the first place and uh, you know maybe this could be prevented somehow so let's talk about a vulnerability assessment so what a vulnerability assessment is is it identifies known vulnerabilities and those vulnerabilities uh, affect could affect be affected uh, or be affecting server software web apps firewalls and uh, those are both internal and external facing devices so we, we do a vulnerability assessment what we do is we do an outside one we do an inside one why do we do an inside one because um, a lot of attacks these days are happening from uh, email from the client side exploits in fact most of the uh, the hacks out right now are uh, client side and um, that's probably where you're going to get uh, in trouble first. So known vulnerabilities include published vulnerabilities by the software vendor. And uh, what, a, what a software vendor does, or a hard, hardware software, is uh, someone either uh, tells them about an issue or they discover it on their own. And uh, they're obligated to let everybody know about that vulnerability and provide uh, some sort of a patch and 
most vulnerabilities are usually fixed by patching. That's why patching is, is critical in an IT environment today. But vulnerability assessment doesn't, doesn't prove that there's the actual ability to exploit these vulnerabilities. So a vulnerability may exist, but it may not be, uh, be able, we, we may not be able to exploit it. So what a vulnerability assessment is going to do is it's going to tell you known vulnerabilities in your software, but it's not giving you confirmation that these exist. Now, the question is, do I need a penetration test? You know, is that something that, um, you know, do I need to prove this? Sometimes you do. Sometimes it's a, a compliance requirement. And other times it's just good to know. So what we recommend is doing uh, vulnerability assessments quarterly and penetra penetration testing annually. Now, penetration testing uh, is performed by uh, ethical hacking. I'm a certified ethical hacker. That means that uh, I work for the good guys and uh, try to know as much as I can and be able to uh, basically mimic what a, uh, a person that uh, has uh, malice, malicious means uh, would do. So what we try to do is uh, once we do vulner uh, vulnerability testing is and find the vulnerabilities, what we do is we test those uh, vulnerabilities against the current uh, infrastructure of the client. Now we also uh, do uh, social engineering as penetration testing as part of the penetration package. And the uh, social engineering uh, can include a whole lot of things, but really what it is is uh, we might be able to set up some sort of a, a phishing attack simulation uh, where we would send your um, your employees, uh, you know, a, a, a very innocuous looking uh, email, and they click on it, and you know, we we gather the stats, we tell you about it, and uh, tell you how you can train those employees not to do that. We also do what's called impersonation. So, one of the things we do when we uh, do a penetration test is call up somebody on the phone and um, you know ask them for their password say we're from the help desk and then we might also do what's known as dumpster diving and actually go inside the dumpster behind uh, your business and look and see if we can find anything that uh, is proprietary or might contain sensitive data so penetration testing is going to going to provide you confirmation um, that these known vulnerabilities can be exploited. So how we help, uh, we test for networks, vulnerabilities, exploits, social weaknesses, um, and we provide you with uh, feedback and help you fix those problems. So thank you very much and uh, have a great day and if you need to contact us please do so at our website under the contact page. Thank you.